into this final by a hundredth of a second in front of his teammate Jordan Catchpole and only in it via a disqualification for the Australian Ricky Beater. That was the standard. It was crazy this morning. Here's your start list. Shan, Schluter, Dunn, Krynik, Avers, Tokairi, Kuliabin and Hamer. A really, really tough couple of heats earlier. Standard across both. Both could have been finals, in essence. It was tough to manage the heats, these S14s. No such pressure here. They know they have to go out as quick as possible to have any chance of getting on a podium in perhaps the most competitive field of any race we've seen this week. Yeah, and the danger is everywhere. These S14 athletes often struggle to pace a race, so quite often you will see them all go as hard as they can from the start, which adds to the drama as you get into those closing stages. But it is that black cap of Reeston, of Great Britain, who is in formidable form here at his first ever World Championships, who's leading by the slimmest of margins at the first turn. Brynick going out with him. Schluter not too far behind for Australia. Brynick looking very good on the back of here. Reese done there. We see him hugging that lane rope. This ceiling in the aquatic centre is very difficult to use to guide you down these backstroke lengths. But here we go. This is it at the 100 metre turn. It will be the man from Great Britain who's already got two gold medals at these World Championships leading. But keep an eye out for the breaststroke leg. The breaststroke is probably Reese Dunn's weaker leg of this individual medley. And this is where Fazil Krynak will look to make his move because Reese Dunn dominated the 200 metre freestyle earlier in the week so he knows the danger that would be coming from the British man so the Ukrainian will be looking here to lead at the final turn but Reese Dunn doing very well here to keep with Krynak and as we turn into the final 50 metres Reese Dunn is 0.37 off the lead huge swim from Reese Dunn to keep the pace and now he's got to go the Japanese swimmer in lane six, Daito Kairin, sneaking into first place at the turn, and he's finishing really strongly. But here comes Rhys Dunn into the final 15 metres we go, and it's between Great Britain and Japan. Dunn and Takairin who gets there. Daito Kairin for Japan. 2.08.16, a massive new world record. Well, the Japanese behind us are going crazy and he did he went completely under the radar like he he wanted that so badly he was the fastest man in the world this year and reese dunn's strong freestyle was not enough to catch Dai Toker in there unbelievable swim unbelievable swim from Dai Tokairin reese dunn will pick up the silver medal he also was inside world record time but not quicker in this race the bronze will go to Vasil Krynik of Ukraine. Way back in the end. With 15 metres to go, I thought Dunn was going to do it. He seemed to have that extra bit of pace. And then something happened. Dieter Kyron just seemed to dig deep and find another gear to go to. Well, we talked about the pacing problems for these SM14 athletes. And they do sometimes go out really hard. And it was the Ukrainian and the Brit that went out quickly. Togger in there, he just bided his time and came through at the end. Well, his breaststroke was so strong, put him into contention. Came from nowhere to be leading at the turn. Reese Dunn would have just wanted to be in with a shout at that turn, and he was. And he absolutely smashed it. You can't do anything more than go inside a world record pace. It's a European record for Reese Dunn but not a world record. That belongs to Dieter Kairin. What a swim. 208-16. Basil Krynik, the bronze.